Hey, you know, one of my favorite Bible stories is uh, where Jesus and his inner circle, Peter, James, and John, go up to the mountain, and they're going up there to, uh, to fellowship. You know, they're going to have a meeting, a rendezvous with the Father God. And uh, so they're probably all excited and going on a hike. You know, there's nothing like a, so stimulating getting out here in the wilderness and hiking. And so anyway, they're, they're hiking up the mountain. And uh, at a certain point, Jesus stops and probably begins to commune with the Father, as, uh, as he often did. And uh, all of a sudden, Jesus becomes bright. I mean, so bright. The Bible says whiter than any fuller could make his garments began to shine like whiter than any uh all temperature clothes detergent could make anything glow i mean he was just glowing right and uh, and then on top of that i mean and then the glory cloud is there you know the the cloud of glory and peter james and john are i can't imagine what they must have been thinking they were probably like like totally blown out of their sockets, you know, just staring at what was happening, thinking, is this a dream? And uh, and then on top of that, there were two more guests there that, that weren't there before, and that was uh, Elijah and Moses appeared and, and were, were talking to Jesus and counseling him, uh, with him, about what was about to happen. And so Peter is just caught up in the moment beside himself, and says, Lord, it's great for us to be here. Let's build, let's build three altars. Uh, one for you, one for uh, Moses, and one for Elijah. And then just then, the glory of God uh, parts. I can imagine the clouds and the sky rolling back or whatever. And um, in dramatic fashion, the Father says, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. So God uh, coming and basically t saying, you know, all right, Peter, no, no, you got the wrong, you got the wrong message here. You're getting the wrong, wrong idea. This isn't about Elijah and Moses. This is all about Jesus. Elijah represents the prophets. Moses represents the law and, and the law and the prophets were together in Christ Go, about to fulfill God's plan of the ages, uh, foreordained before the foundation of the world, that Jesus was about to be crucified on the cross for us, for our sins. He was about to take our place on the cross, become our sin substitute. God was going to lay the sins of, of all men on all men and women, everybody on Jesus at the cross, and was about to uh, to do this work. So. Anyway, that's one of my favorite stories because uh, it's, it's a manifestation of the glory of God with the glowing. And I can remember one time my cousin and I, Steve, were out one night praying. And uh, we were speaking the word to each other. We were challenging each other. We, you know, uh, I, I led Steve to the Lord and, and we, we fellowshiped. We were like Peter and Paul evangelizing our whole family and all of our friends. And, and uh, that night um, someone saw us. From the road we were in his side yard and someone at the end of hayfield road came walking up to us and we saw him looking at us like coming off the sidewalk like gawking at us and he we, we looked back at him and we were like what, what's going on here and the guy says you guys are glowing and i and you know we we just laughed because you know all we were doing is what we normally would do when we got together is speak the word to one another, encourage each other, build each other up, praise God together, and uh, start re we just start reciting scriptures, you know, from memory. We would, we would just uh, back and forth. With it. We would have a conversation with the word of God. And uh, anyway, so it was really cool. And, and that same night, in fact, we, um, we witnessed to him, talked to him about Jesus. And then I think that was the same night that there was a carload of guys smoking weed down at the end of Hayfield Road over by the Hayfield Pool. And we went over to them and uh, they said, hey man, where's the parties at? Do you know where any parties are? And I said, yeah, I know where a party is. They said, really? Is there, 
Is there chicks there? Oh yeah, yeah, there's gonna be chicks there. Where, man? Tell us about it. And I said, the marriage supper of the lamb. Oh, it's gonna be glorious. And while I was talking to him about the marriage supper of the lamb and what that was and what it means, the guy in the back seat just opens up the door, gets out and shakes my hand and says, I'm a Christian. And I said, praise God, that, there's a man who just stood up in front of his party and friends and testified that he was a Christian. Um, praise God. The Lord doesn't get all hung up about uh, partying and stuff. It's just not good. It's not conducive to, to our walk with him. It's not something we should be doing if we're, if we're wanting to grow in fellowship, grow in revelation, grow in the things that God wants us to grow in, and grow in and uh, manifesting the glory of God into the earth, which is what it's all about, you know. So one of the reasons that's one of my favorites is because the word transfiguration, it actually is uh, the root word is metamorpho in the Greek. Now, if you uh, um, go to Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, it says, uh, I beseech you, therefore, brothers, by the brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service or, uh, you know, um, your ministry, your priestly ministry as, as kings and priests uh, in, in our God, unto our God that Jesus has made us to be. Uh, and then it goes on in verse 2, and don't be conformed, shaped and molded by this world, but be transformed. That word transformed is the word metamorphosis. Uh, metamorpho, the Greek word metamorpho. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You see, the mind is where the battle is after you become a Christian. That's what, we're, that's what we're supposed to be doing, is renewing our mind every day as to who we've become in Christ, who we are in Christ. You know, in Philemon it says that the uh, communication of your faith would be made more effectual, more effective, by the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. So uh, we see that uh, all throughout the Word of God, the renewing of the mind, acknowledging who we are, confessing who we are in Christ, speaking what the Word of God says about us. You're not just an old sinner saved by grace. You are now a new creation in Christ. You're, a, you're risen with Christ, and you're seated with Christ in heavenly places. That's called the Pauline Revelation. It's the doctrine of identification and the doctrine of substitution. Jesus Christ became totally identified with us in our sin, in that he became sin on the cross. In uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses uh, 17 through 21, you can read about that. It says that how that God made Jesus who to be sin for us, who uh, Jesus who knew no sin, he never knew sin, he never committed sin, so that we might be made the righteousness of God in him, in Christ. So uh, anyway, so it says in Romans 12, verse 2, that we don't be conformed uh, or shaped or, or, or held and molded and, and become, try to be uh, friends with the world. Don't be shaped by what this world esteems as being great. The Bible says that that which is uh, highly esteemed among men is an abomination to God. So, so don't be shaped and molded. Don't allow yourself to be blown about by every wind of doctrine, everything that the world is presenting to you, uh, all this stuff that's coming through our devices and all the things that, that, that the world tries to do to shape us in, into its mold. But be transformed, be metamorphosized like a caterpillar gets transformed into a butterfly, be metamorphosized by the word of God, by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So uh, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if th that's the first step. You got to get there. Man, if you don't, if you don't receive that, you're not going to get any of the benefits of what Jesus went through that gruesome and horrible death on the cross for. The Bible says Jesus despised the cross. He hated the shame of the cross. It wasn't something that he wanted to do, but he willingly laid himself down because he knew that by doing so, he was going to bring many sons and daughters to glory. So that's always been his goal. And our goal as Christians, once we become born again, once we become renewed in our hearts is to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. So allow that same transfer 
transformation to happen in our minds through feeding on the Word of God, meditating in the Word of God, praying the Word of God, and speaking the Word of God to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. And so, anyway, if you don't know Jesus, pray this prayer with me, mean it from your heart, and just invite him to come in right now. Lord Jesus, thank you for what you did for me on the cross. Father God, thank you for sending Jesus to the cross for me. I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior right now into my heart. And I thank you, I trust you with my soul, that you are the Savior of my soul, and that you will change me from the inside out. I'm not going to try to change myself from the outside in. That's religion. No, it's inviting Christ to come in, to live in you, and to begin to speak to you, to whisper to you the secrets of, of his heart, through, and through the word of God, to begin to change you, uh, develop you, transform you by his light. And um, so anyway, yeah, invite Jesus to come in and thank, and thank you, say thank you, Lord, for your blood. I believe your blood washes away all my sins. I don't believe that you died in vain. I believe, at least not on my, in my case, I believe that you died in my place and, and that your uh, blood washes away all my sins, past, present, and future, all sins dealt with, done away with, as gone as can be gone, uh, as far as the east is from the west. And, um, and I thank you, Father, for that. And I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And uh, I uh, thank you for your word. And I will uh, trust your Holy Spirit to reveal and speak your word to me as I continue on this path and this, uh, this glorious life with Jesus. And uh, much more, there's many more things that can be said about this, but uh, stay tuned and uh, we'll get more into what it means to, to be metamorphosizing your mind, to be transfigured, to actually to where your body begins to glow and people will start to come up to you and say, wow, you guys, you're glowing. <laughs>